I'll never forget at the end of August of 2022, I was sitting on a sofa in my counselor's office, just devastated about Thatcher and the state that he was in. It made me realize the severity of the situation and just the toll that it was taking on not only my mental health, but that of, of my husband and my other kids to be living in a home where you have a child screaming all of the time and not being able to help him. I think it's really hard for parents to understand when you have a child who that is their baseline, that is their norm to be screaming and crying for large portions of the day. I mean, it's hard to even imagine unless you're living in that and just out of whack and you're in this fight or flight all the time. And so it's hard. It's just hard to imagine until you're in that situation. To simply follow someone else's gaze, to know another person's mind through their gestures and speech, and to put our minds together to achieve shared goal. These things each reflect the sophistication of human to human connection. And it all comes back to a fundamental synergy in the human brain itself, known as synaptic transmission. The question is, when we look at Alzheimer's disease, what has faltered in the brain to disrupt this nerve cell connection? Neuroscientist and biochemist Dr. Dayan Goodenow believes he answered that question in 2007 through his own system of deeply analyzing the molecules of blood. And so when I use this comparing Alzheimer's patients with dementia versus cognitively normal people, a certain class of molecules was observed to be much lower in everyone with dementia right. and more normal in those people that had regular cognition. And I had no idea what these molecules were. So using this technology, I was able to calculate its molecular formula. Holy crap, this is exciting, they're plasmalogies. Plasmalogens are building blocks for cell membranes, while cell membranes in turn regulate nerve cell communication. Loss of plasmalogens disrupts this communication to impair thought, memory, speech, and movement, the hallmark impairments of Alzheimer's disease. And at the opposite end of the life spectrum, Thatcher 6 and Nova 3 have suffered a most severe disruption to such functions. Both kids have rhizomelic chondrodysplasia punctata, or RCDP, a very rare disease that is completely caused by loss of plasmalogens. It causes shortening of the upper arm and thigh bones and deforms the joints, making them stiff and painful. It also causes intellectual disability and heart and breathing problems. Generally, the outlook is not good for children with RCDP. You know, Thatcher at age six is less functional than he was at six to nine months. Like he was speaking and he lost his speech. So he was declining for several years. And so like there is, it's a one way street. Like these kids do not survive. If they survive, if you look at the children that are older, that are in their teens, okay, their symptoms and their quality of life just gets worse and worse and worse. Dr. Goodenow compares a low plasmalogen count to having scurvy the disease that once heavily afflicted sailors because they couldn't get enough vitamin C on long sea voyages. Thatcher has what's essentially a genetic vitamin deficiency. Okay, it's really no different than having scurvy, which is a vitamin C deficiency. So if you're out on the ocean and you had no access to fruits and vegetables, you would become vitamin C deficient. So your environment on that ship created a circumstance which you could not get vitamin C and then your body would suffer from the lack of vitamin C and you would get the symptoms of scurvy, which are quite severe, you'll die, right? Now, Thatcher has the exact same concept. Instead of being on a ship in the middle of the ocean, his body can't make that plasmalogen. So he might as well be in the ocean not being able to get that particular nutrient. But the matter of restoring plasmalogens is not as straightforward as supplementing vitamin C or magnesium. 
Plasmalogens are made in sufficient supply in the cells of a healthy, functioning body. In RCDP and in Alzheimer's, this process breaks down. Sadly, over the years, many kids with RCDP have died as medical science has grappled with how to restore plasmalogens to their bodies. But the tide could be turning on this front through a new way to supplement plasmalogens. And it draws its technology from the very first source of plasmalogens for a human being after it has left the womb. So when children are born, they're born with an inability to make enough plasmalogens already. And so the, it's already natural that they get breastfed. And human breast milk has one of the highest concentrations of plasmalogen precursors or plasmalogen nutrients. And for that first six months is when breastfeeding is very important because it helps improve that brain development of the child. And so all we've done, or all I've done, is design plasmalogens as nutrients based upon the exact same mechanism that breast milk is used to feed babies. Late in 2022, both Thatcher and Nova were given the chance to try plasmalogen supplements, engineered by Dr. Goodenow. Up to this point, Thatcher and Nova and their families had hit points of crisis with the children's illness. This is scary. It's terrifying. Thatcher? Honey? Hey. Honey, you're okay. You're okay. You're okay. Okay. Okay, and um, we might have to call 911. Okay. They said five minutes. Thatcher? Thatcher has the non-classic form of RCDP. He's only the 16th child in the world to, to have this non-classic form. Basically, we were told that it's a progressive disease and that he's going to continue to get worse, not better. Because he had no way of communicating his needs. And as a parent, it was just heart-wrenching to watch your child and not know. You know, is he crying because he's hungry? Is he hurt? Is he sick? Is he thirsty? Is he tired? What other choice do you have when you're told that your child, his heart and his lungs are going to continue to get worse and ultimately he's going to die? She was five months old um, and she started having the rapid eye movement um, and her eyes were just rolling around in her head and we ended up taking her to the emergency room. She was diagnosed with cataracts and ended up having her lenses removed. It went from just, she's little. I didn't think she looked sick. I just thought she was small. To, okay, there's other things happening. Your worst case scenario is a terminal diagnosis. We were young first time parents. We had all of these hopes and dreams for what a family would look like and all of that was taken away. When you talk about plasmalogen restoration, we think about brain diseases, right? Alzheimer's as plasmalogen deficiency. But the other big areas of the human body is the heart and the lungs. Those are two second and third largest organs of plasmalogens. And most of these children with RCDP, they will die of either pulmonary failure or heart failure. Months before starting the treatment, Thatcher had an echocardiogram taken of his heart. It showed that his heart was in decline. In October 2022, five weeks after starting the plasmalogens, Thatcher had a follow-up check of his heart health. The cardiologist came in and said, you know, I, I've never seen this before. I, I don't have a medical explanation for you, but Thatcher's heart is now functioning at a normal level. And like, I just got chills. Like It was so overwhelming because Dr. Good now said that that would happen. What happened to Thatcher is what I expected. Okay, so when we started giving him plasmalogens, his, his early echo returned to normal, as it should. You think about being out in nature. <laughs> yeah, you're not so sure. Oh, Thatcher's got another plan. He's gonna circle around. He was kind of um, just unsettled a lot at the beginning of the year and would have a hard time in the afternoon. He'd hit like kind of a wall from noon on um, and would cry and just, like I said, be unsettled and not really, uh, we were actually thinking, is it good for him to be here all day? I 
would say like around the end of October, I was able to tell uh, Thatcher's family at conferences that we had seen a lot of more uh, of him initiating engagement. He loves that and he just giggles. Um, he's just gotten used to going in the swing and he lights up and like just belly laughs when he's swinging. He's just blooming. I just feel like, you know, we're just seeing so much growth and engagement now that we weren't.